I've always kind of been obsessed with alternative housing models. I designed and built this house with the help of my business partner, Payam. This house was uh, designed for myself and my wife and now our young son. We built this house as the prototype. We really wanted the lived experience to give us better knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. of like all the systems, all, like how you use the space, all of those things. I was somewhat feeling ready for a change, but I also really wanted to see Lee um, living out what he had dreamed up and I felt like the transition into tiny home living was quite seamless. We had had pretty small spaces in Toronto also and I never found space to be an issue for me. I really like the airiness of this space. I like how it flows from one room to the next room. For me it's the efficiency of space, it's knowing where everything is, it's, it's knowing how everything works. Mm -hmm. So this house is entirely off-grid. It's eight and a half feet wide by 32 feet long by 13 and a half feet tall. We actually went through the process of getting this unit certified uh, through Entertech. It's uh, certified Z240 RV, so it doesn't require any additional permits to tow it anywhere, uh, and you can park it anywhere you park an RV. Um, so this is the living room. We designed this couch to reuse some of the cushions we already had. There's added storage underneath. This whole area actually went through, uh, this is probably the second iteration now. The original had like three benches, we wanted to keep it really modular but found that it just kind of got messy with open storage so I redesigned it. Now all closed storage, which uh, definitely helps with Max getting into things. Yeah, and then we integrated a breakfast bar here with uh, a little bench with some shoe storage uh, and a little tech cabinet to charge stuff and hide our laptops. You'll notice we don't really have an entry closet, um, so we kind of accounted for that now with, uh, with this bench. That's where we keep our coats and uh, our shoes and stuff. It's all kind of integrated in areas that we already needed in the space. This doubles as extra seating, so we can have kind of like this U-shape uh, seating arrangement, especially if we pull out this bench, which is great for like conversation, having people over. Uh, we can even pull out that bench as like a coffee table. We were going for a very uh, minimalistic Scandinavian style with this first build and we wanted to keep a very tight uh, material palette so we went with pine plywood and that's also why there's plywood on the floor. It just helps with that minimalist aesthetic. I also designed this uh, cabinet which is also our pantry and our ladder to our sleeping loft. And this kind of was the most compact but also gave us the most amount of storage space for the kitchen. We actually left a gap between the shelves and, and the ladder just to make it easier to, uh, to actually grab the rungs, uh, get up the stairs and so that you're not like stepping on spices and teas and stuff when you're trying to get upstairs. <laughs> So this is our kitchen. Uh, we went with a galley style. It just makes things very efficient. It's super convenient. Even with like two of us cooking in the kitchen, we each have a little bit of counter space. We went for basically all black cabinets and this side is actually narrower than typical. It's uh, like 21 inches deep. This side's standard so that we could fit a full apartment sized fridge, uh, kind of built-in propane oven and cooktop and we kind of did a reverse situation of most people's kitchens. We got a granite sink and a stainless steel countertop. We have enough storage for everything we need and then uh, we also raised everything about six inches to utilize the under storage. And that also allows us to add ventilation and stuff for our propane furnace. That's our only source of heat and this thing stayed nice and toasty all winter. 
we're located in Ontario, Canada, so we do get temperatures down to like negative 27 in the winter. So we are very well insulated. It's primarily rock wool insulation with a little bit of spray foam in the ceiling. So we have designed this with clear story windows above the living room and loft area. And then that combined with the operating kitchen window and even patio door, we get some really good cross ventilation through here. We have a ceiling fan in the living room and in the bedroom, uh, which are super quiet and we really like these things and they move a lot of air. So the bathroom, uh, we've actually built on a raised platform. So yeah, all the plumbing is within the raised uh, platform and that prevents freezing in the winter. As long as the house is heated, there's zero chance of any of our water lines freezing. So all the plumbing runs through the sides. That left room for a four foot uh, storage drawer for more like longer term storage items. The little steps are removable. There's one on each side. So we went with um, solid core pocket doors. The great thing about that is we have very, very minimal sound transfer from the bedroom in the back to this room and vice versa. The design of this bathroom, we, we were going for a very, again, with the Scandinavian minimalist theme. Uh, we were going for a little bit more spa-like in here, but also wanted it to be durable. So that's why we're not necessarily doing plywood in the bathroom. But we did do custom uh, vanity and a little medicine cabinet that matches. This is our washer dryer combo, which we primarily use in the summer because in the winter it uses a little too much power. But uh, in the summer it works great and then we hang dry all our clothes. And the toilet, we went with the Nature's Head composting toilet. It does what it needs to do. There's really very little smell, but we have found that we have to empty that urine bottle a little more than we'd like. We managed to fit a full-size shower in here. It's about 32 by 42 inches. Uh, we went with a full porcelain tile. For the shower head, we went with the spa shower from Nebbia by Moen. It conserves something like 40% of the water of a typical shower head, which is important since we're off-grid. We wanted to be uh, very conscious of our water consumption because we get our water delivered. We're not on a well here. The wells around here are pretty spotty in terms of their production. So this is our utility closet. So here we fit our on-demand hot water heater, um, a bunch of extra storage for like our vacuum, UV water filtration and particle filter and a little step stool to actually get at um, the skylights or to clean our ceiling fans, reach the storage. So this is the main floor bedroom. Um, we tried to design it to be as modular as possible. So if our needs in the future change, we can kind of reorient things as we need to. Um, when we first moved in here, we actually had the queen bed uh, in this area and the mini crib actually fit next to it. We opted for the mini crib because this is a mini house and we have a mini human, so it all works together. I built a full floor to ceiling closet. This is basically all of our clothes and we've become very good at folding clothes to fit in a small space. Um, everything fits in like little bins. We sized it to basically our longest shirt. This is our reading nook. It was important for us to have a, a place to sit, uh, hang out with Max. So we wanted to make sure that uh, this room was big enough for, for Max to, to have enough space to play, to feel comfortable, to be able to grow up in a little bit. And in the future, when, when he grows up a little bit, maybe we'll switch back and Becky and I will move in here and Max can have the loft. So this is our sleeping loft slash reading nook. So I built in a bookcase on the far side. There's the skylight directly overhead, which definitely gives more of an open feeling up there. Yeah, and because we are so rural, we do get a beautiful view of the stars through the skylight. It is quite cozy. We are planning on getting a thinner mattress in the future. Um, in our last apartment, I actually built a sleeping loft in the bedroom. So we, we got pretty used to having a little loft space. We could easily add a railing. We opted not to. It's just easier to get in and out of the loft this way. 
Um, in the future, if Max moves up there, I'd likely build like a kind of dresser that also acts as a bit of a railing. So we did develop like an off-grid system that's separate from the tiny house and that kind of gave us the flexibility to point it directly south so that our big windows aren't necessarily facing south. So we did a 9 by 12 solar shed essentially that's very well insulated. We get water delivered. It has a 2,000 gallon water tank that we draw from. The roof holds about 4,000 watts of solar, which is plenty for us for, for the yeah. summer. Like we haven't had to run the generator in a few months. Unfortunately, like that's one of the learnings uh, of living off grid. Winter, being so cold and needing to protect water lines from freezing, we had to run at a heat trace which takes up more electricity. So we did have to run the generator quite a bit in the winter. So we're currently renting a small piece of land from friends of ours. Uh, and so we just, yeah, it's a pretty small fee that we pay them. And it's nice to also be alongside them and be able to live in community with them in that way. But it's really hard to feel like you always have to ask permission from somebody else um, for the things that you're doing around your home or that you are at someone else's mercy should they decide to leave. I guess that's something you you come up against in a, in a rental yep. space also. Uh, I think Lee and I had somewhat different lifestyles in the city. Lee would have to drive to work, whereas I was uh, much more active in cycling and taking transit places. Uh, so that's a component like that I really, really miss. That's been probably one of my biggest adjustments to rural living, but this home can't exist in the city. And so unless something becomes radically different, we ought to live on the outskirts. Yeah, and being a small space, we don't necessarily have a guest bedroom that we can oh, invite yes. people to stay in, unfortunately. Like, eventually that would be the, the ideal is to kind of build an extra bunkie to allow for more family to visit and yeah. friends to stay from out of town. We moved into the house uh, when Max was about four months old. I can play with Max in these spaces. We've learned to make little hacks, uh, like our ability to put up a jolly jumper right now. I've never actually felt like this space was too small for us. I really appreciate him being able to live in a space where we can say, your dad built this. Uh, and this was actually designed also with you in mind. I started a business with a friend of mine. So our company's called Instead, and that's kind of a play on alternative dwellings and homesteads. So we started this company out of a strong appreciation for architecture, design, efficient use of space, sustainability, trying to wrap all those values in, mm -hmm. into one. We do want to focus on actually providing a meaningful alternative for people. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also find out more about Instead Tiny Homes on their website and on Instagram at instead.works. Thanks for watching.